Hi, my name is Cam Newhauser. I'm an account manager for Master Graphics for 3D printing business in Wisconsin and Minnesota. And I'm here to show you today the HP 5200 Multi-Jet Fusion 3D printer. The HP 5200 is what's called a powder-based 3D printing system. But unlike other powder-based systems like SLS or binder jetting, the HP 5200 does not use a laser to draw apart geometries or glue to bind them together. HP utilizes their own patented process called multi-jet fusion technology, which uses printheads to jet agents onto material powder and then using heat to fuse them together in one single layer simultaneously. Other benefits of powder-based systems, as opposed to a typical FDM printer, is that since, since the part is encased in powder by the end of the process, there is no need for support structures during the build, so complex geometries can be printed much more efficiently. Before we start printing on the HP 5200, we have to fill the build unit with our desired material powder. The build will be taken from the printer into the processing station here. The processing station is responsible for a few different functions, such as filling the build unit with material powder, and also removing and recycling unused powder after the build is complete. First, we push the build unit into the processing station, and after that we follow the prompts on the screen and then attach the holes inside here. This post-processing station is 100% contained and makes filling and removing powder a much cleaner system than most. Once filled, the build unit is brought back over to the printer and the build can be started. Once the filled build unit is back in the printer, the build file is sent to the printer and we can begin. When printing, the machine will pull powder from inside the build unit up on top of this plate in a thin layer, about three thousandths of an inch thick. This plate will move down as more powder is subsequently put up on top in other layers. These lamps here are constantly holding the temperature to the powder to just below its melting point, bringing it close enough to almost have a reaction. After the powder is spread in a thin layer, the print head here will slide across and jet the agents onto the powder according to the geometries of the part you are making. As this agent is jetted, simultaneously there are more lamps on the print head under here that will blast light as it is depositing those. And since these agents are black, it will absorb most of the heat and fuse the powder together, creating that part layer. The black agent and the white material powder will then create the gray parts that you see here. The ability to print a single layer in one eight second pass is what sets the multi-jet fusion technology apart from other systems with regards to speed. One of the reasons multi-jet fusion parts have incredible detail and accuracy is because part of the agent that is deposited is called the detailing agent, which is used on the outer edges of the part to stop the fusing process from fusing any more powder other than the part you want, meaning tight tolerances and complex designs are much easier to do. Since the 5200 prints in a single, one-dimensional layers, build times will depend on how much of the entire build area you are using in the vertical height. So the build will be arranged in the X and Y space first, then use the vertical height. For example, if you have multiple of these parts, the build will be designed this way first, and then be using the vertical height. The HP 5200 will then continue printing subsequent layers until the entire 3D part is complete. Think of these layers like when someone gets an MRI on their brain. Doctors can see your brain in thin layers, and all of these single, one-dimensional slices put together makes up the entire 3D figure of your brain. The print head, which functions just like a regular 2D printer, will print whatever needs to be in that sheet and will take the same amount of time to print if you type one word on a page or hundreds of words on a page. After the build is done, we have to cool it in order to begin unpacking the parts from the powder safely. There is a few ways to accomplish this. Natural cooling means we let it cool inside the build unit, which typically takes triple the time it took to actually build the parts themselves. Or, depending on the material used, we can bring the unit over to the processing station here and utilize the fast cooling feature by removing the hot air from the build unit. After the build is cooled to a safe temperature, we can begin what's called unpacking the build. Stay tuned for another in-depth video on post-processing techniques as well.